Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back, finally, to our favorite albums of each year series. I know it's definitely a popular series on the channel, relatively. It's one that people enjoy and we get a lot of engagement on. So hopefully you're satisfied by its return in what is an absolutely mammoth year in music history. We're talking 1975. So many famous albums. We sort of talked about this in 71, where it might have been the year where the most famous albums came out in one year. And I think 75 gives it a run for its money. There's so much here that you will have heard of. Hopefully stuff on all our lists that you will have not heard of and think, hmm, I'm going to check that out now. Um, so this is really exciting. I'm all decked up. I got my Zuma shirt on. I got Born to Run behind me. Try and guess the other three on my list. It'll be fun. Um, and Chris, how do you feel about 1975? Welcome back. Great to see Thank you. Yes, thanks for having me. Uh, yes, while you guys were reviewing Wilco, I was seeing Wilco. Um, regardless, I am happy to be back, happy to be here for 1975. Uh, it's it's a very good year. I, 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 I'm still unsure how it stacks against 1971, 72, 73, but... Um, you know, no disrespect to 1974. I do think it's a, it's a good step up. We've kind of returned to form, um, in the seventies. So I'm, I'm here. I, I love a lot of what I'm going to talk about. Um, no shortage of, of good stuff here. Yeah. And Vanessa, how are you doing? <laughs> good, good. Um, well, I love 1974 as we covered, so I don't know that I feel like it's a step up. I think it's about even. And I don't know. It's close. Um, it does feel like a shift culturally, though. And I, I guess I think I was thinking about that earlier today. Like, I always feel like that on the five years. And I don't know if it's like because I want it to be a shift because it's the halfway point or if it actually is a shift. But it did feel like a shift this time around. So lots of good stuff, though. Yeah, um, I think for me. This is definitely a step up over 74. It's probably a step up over 73 as well for me. Um, 72, 71, 70, that's like best ever years territory. So I don't know. It's hard to compare to those, but lots of great stuff. So I had to check because we haven't recorded in like two months. Chris, it turns out that you're going first. Vanessa will go second and I will finish us off for 1975. Chris, yes, the floor is yes. yours. First is the worst, as they used to say. Um, just when I would finish first. I don't know why they would say that. Okay. Uh, albums 1975. Yeah, there's there's quite a few good ones. Um, only found a couple that I didn't really care for. Um, and we don't need to talk about those, but most of the, even if I didn't cover it, if I did listen to it this year, it, there's a good chance I enjoyed it. Um, probably because I try to prioritize the good stuff, but regardless, um, my honorable mentions for 1975, yeah, a couple of these kind of hurt to put low, but you know, you only give me five, so thanks for giving me a chance to shout them out. So, um, my first honorable mention, these aren't really ranked, so don't put too much stock in where I put them, but um, anyway. My first honorable mention will be uh, Katie Lied by Steely Dan. Um, yeah, you know, uh, uh, Jeff Picaro on drums on this record, as Clay famously asked today, is that a bassist? Um, really great record. Probably not my favorite of theirs, but the chops continue. You know, um, they just they continue to have great instrumentation and uh, memorable songs. So Katie Lied, great record. Uh, next honorable mention will be Physical Graffiti by Led Zeppelin. I know we went through all this, and I don't love every song on this record, but I do think it's remarkably consistent. Scotty, Scotty has mixed feelings, but and and there's too many good tracks to worry too much about the less good ones. The 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 tracks that are even a bad or or not great Led Zeppelin song is still a Led Zeppelin song. You know what I mean? So anyway. Yeah. Physical graffiti. Uh, my next honorable mention is Zuma by Neil Young. Um, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can you can shout it out more. I know. A double Neil year. Uh, strong, strong Neil, uh, Neil year. 
And I found this one uh, a little more consistent, so I'm shouting it out. Uh, but I did love it a lot. Found uh, a lot of great songs. Some that I knew, some were new to me. So uh, awesome, awesome one. Uh, then I'm going to give a shout out to Parliament. Mothership Connection. Yeah. P-Funk to the extreme. Hard not to get down on this. George Booty, uh, Bootsy, excuse me, Booty. Yeah, I mean, you shake your booty to Bootsy. Um, yeah, I don't think Eddie Hazel was on this one, but, you know, shout out regardless. He deserves it. Um, the Afro-futuristic Afro movement, it's just an incredible piece of art. And my final honorable mention. Ah, geez, I know. I'm sorry, everybody. It's 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 blood on the tracks. Um, yeah, I know. Bob Dylan's back, though. Well, did he ever leave? I'm, he left my list, so that's for sure. But, but he's almost he's almost back. <laughs> A few of my favorite Bob Dylan tracks on on this record. And sorry, sorry, I couldn't put him in. So for my actual list, okay, I spent too much time talking about honorable mentions. They're not even my list. They don't really matter. Just kidding. Those are all great records to me. Um, but number five will be "Face the Music" by Electric Light Orchestra um yeah i know i know i'm i'm surprised that this record doesn't get more love frankly um i've always kind of loved this record and i think well it's 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 rated low in kind of their their classical run like their traditional great records if you will um i don't really care that it's not rated well because i've always loved it um you know you come for evil woman and strange magic hell yeah but you know you stay for this, like, they're kind of out of the prog sound. They're getting into this, you know, Jeff Lynn pop heaven. And uh, I, I just, I love it. I love uh, Waterfall, One Summer Dream. Um, it, it all just coalesces into a great, it's like 35 minutes. And it's mostly what I want from ELO. So uh, I look forward to going through the rest of the records and seeing if they continue to win. I don't know. We'll find out. But uh, face the music, yeah, I lo I love it. Uh, I understand if it's not for everyone, but it is for me. Uh, number four is going to be "Born to Run" by Bruce Springsteen. This, yeah. So I I probably slept on you know the boss for a little bit, and and it took me a little time to warm up to the the Heartland Rock. Um, this album just kind of it you know it it just sounds like the open road um incredible hooks um the lyrics and vibe just make me want to drive across the country in a blaze of glory um alas i cannot uh i have as uh, angela pickles once called them sponsorabilities but i do think that um bruce springsteen here it, it, it incredible songwriting just uh, several memorable like instantly memorable songs and uh obvious uh great great songwriting so and uh, overall, I, I, I just this 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 one is phenomenal in the car. Um, if you haven't listened to it in the car, you you should. Um, anyway, that's it for that. Ah, uh, who's getting bronze? Who's getting bronze medal? Number three, Captain Fantastic and the Dirt Brown Cowboy. Elton John gets bronze, of course. He's better than bronze overall, but he, this year he's bronze. This album was not at all on my radar. I don't even know. So, so I knew, um, you know, somebody saved my life tonight. I, I, but I didn't know, I think, the rest of this record at all until the TLM Elden Deep Dive, which I did not complete, of course. I mean, who do you think I am? But regardless, I did check this one out and I really liked it because I knew like 1975 was coming and I had already been familiar with some of the seventies Elton records. And, um, uh, I, I'm just blown away by this one. Um, it shouldn't have been a big surprise to me that it was great, but the, the backing vocals throughout, um, the instrumentation and just, just so many awesome songs. Um, uh, this was definitely an easy pick for, for top five. And, uh, I will love this one forever. Um, thank you to nobody for telling me about this record before. Um, yeah, appreciate it. Try to keep Elton from me. Um, this one might be contentious and I do not care. Silver medal goes to Fleetwood Mac, Fleetwood Mac. Um, had to be, had to be. Um, so many great tracks on this. 
it's like the younger sibling to rumors that is like so accomplished it went off to be like a doctor while rumors was like a famous actress or whatever and they kind of resent their elder sibling for getting all the attention and the limelight and they're like i'm actually doing important work here anyway i, I don't know I, that's probably not like that at all they're not sentient but um obviously there are all-timer like fleetwood max ba bangers on here but i think some of the best songs are the deeper cuts like um the song that tom famously gave a 3.0 out of five warm ways and uh and and the incredible say you love me so um i think that there are just a lot of bangers here I, you know ran on obviously one of one of my all-time favorites but uh landslide sure yeah i love it but I, I think it's just through and through a, a phenomenal record that stands alone as, uh, I don't know, a, a, a masterpiece. Why are you bringing um, up my rate your music receipts, man? That's, that's so rude. Yeah, you, you like that? You like that? I called you. Yeah, <laughs> three out of five. I'm like, I love Warm Ways. And then I, I'm like, oh, Tom rated the tracks on here. I wonder what he did. <laughs> anyway, look, number one is Wish You Were Here. Of course, of course. I don't know. I was hoping something could beat it because I feel like a bit of a broken record. Um, nothing quite got there for me. Um, the bookends of this record, you know, being shot on your crazy diamond is just, it's just so good. I mean, holy cow. The first like seven minutes of the record is just a guitar solo or three or four. I, it's, it's just, it's just guitar masterwork, mesmerizing lines um, anyway, I've always been a huge fan of the title track, of course, and uh, the older I got, the more I really appreciated Have a Cigar. Uh, someone on the internet, don't ask me who, called the song Cherub Rock by Smashing Pumpkins, you know, uh, it, Have a Cigar of the 90s. And anyway, that kind of anti-capitalist with music thing is really strong. And, and I guess it's just always been relevant. It's like, hey, stop trying to, you know, get in the way of my art. And uh, so anyway, I, I've always loved Have a Cigar, love the kind of, I don't know, unsettling uh, riff. And, you know, Welcome to the Machine was always a little difficult for me. Um, and I do appreciate it in the context of the record. It's not it's not something I'll ever put on like outside. I do hear it. I, I used to hear it on the radio and I'm like, what? When you listen to it in the context of the record, it all makes sense. But um I don't ever want to put it on by itself. I got to be honest with you. Doesn't matter. Does not matter at all. The rest of this record is is so perfect to me. Um, everything comes together, and it it you know I understand why many people call it their favorite Pink Floyd record. It's probably not my favorite Pink Floyd record, but um, I can't complain about that. You know who who cares? Just just listen to it and and stop stop complaining. Okay, there you go. It's wish you were here. Nice list. I I thought we might see some sparks, but no. Oh well, yeah. maybe maybe we'll see them in songs. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> okay. I I can't contain my excitement. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so I I guess I have some snubs. I realize here after hearing your list, but I I think I have some big ones too. So anyway, um, my honorable mentions, um, 10 to 6, starting from 10, is uh, Elite Hotel by Emmy Lou Harris at number 10, Fleetwood Mac at number 9, uh, Captain Fantastic in the Dirt Brown, or Brown Dirt Cowboy, <laughs> whatever, um, by Elton John, number 8, um, Sabotage by Black Sabbath is number 7, and Force It by UFO is number 6. So... Those are my honorable mentions. And on to the main list, which I don't know. I feel like it's not one of my most unexpected lists anyway, but we'll see. Um, my number five is Born to Run. Um, this is really where Bruce Springsteen comes into his own for me. I'm not as big on his first two albums, but I think his artistic vision really comes together here. And I think it's a big step up from those two. Um, it is a rather grandiose album, which I don't know if I always recognize the extent of that listening to it more casually when I was younger. Like when I listened to it again this week, this, I was going to say this week, but these last few months, um, I was really struck by just how like everything is just amped up the entire time. Um, so I'm not always 
in the mood for it, I don't think. So, because I, I had to listen to it like three or four times to determine if it was actually going to make my list. But I think ultimately, uh, I do I do love the album when I'm in the mood for it. Like, I think it really works. And uh, the songs are all catchy, like Chris said, and there's full of hooks and, and uh, great musicianship and everything. And when it really hits, it, re it, it really does. And um, not much beats how triumphant that title track is in just about any setting. So ultimately, it is my number five. Number four is Wish You Were Here, um, which has come down a bit, but uh, still, still top notch. Um, when I was first getting into classic rock in my late teens, Pink Floyd was one of my gateway bands. Um, I was obsessed with them for a while. And at that time, this was my favorite of their albums. I love the journey that it took me on with the book in, bookends of Shine On You Crazy Diamond and the more concise songs in the middle. Listening to it now always brings back the feelings that I had at that time, how exhilarating I found found the certain guitar parts there at the beginning and throughout, especially the the two Shine On You Crazy Diamond sections. Um, David Gilmore's guitar work always stood out to me even before I paid close attention to things like that. I pay much closer attention to it now, but when I was 19, I wasn't really thinking about it, but he always stood out. Um, over time, I've grown to put other Floyd albums above it, but it's still among my favorites of theirs. Number three is Physical Graffiti. Um, similar to Floyd, Zeppelin was another get gateway band for me around the same time, although this album did take longer for me to appreciate, actually. It is at times imperfect, but I still really think it works. Uh, I love the variety of styles on it and how they really expand what they're doing to make the runtime worthwhile. I think that variety is what makes the time fly by when I'm listening to it. And I also think that while some of these songs are less immediate to me when I was younger, they are the ones that have got, only gotten better for me as I've gotten older and craved more variety in my Zeppelin, um, Down by the Seaside, Houses of the Holy, and the Light, to name a few. I think this album is the definition of a grower. And I think that's why it takes more time for some people. Uh, number two hasn't been mentioned yet. Um, it's Northern Lights, Southern Cross by the band. Um, this is an album that seems to be pretty divisive among fans of the band, um, but I, I really loved it. Uh, I think it is a progression of their sound that makes sense for the time and it works for me. Um, I hear some people say it's too polished, but I, I like them going in that direction. I really like the interesting synths, and at times they really make me think of what Todd Rundgren was doing with synths in the 70s, which makes sense. They work together at times. Um, that is not, not that is only one aspect of what, that I enjoy about the album. I think it is an album filled with great songs that it can really get wrapped up in. Ophelia, Katie and Driftwood, Jupiter Hollow, and it makes no difference, especially. Unfortunately, though, it would be their last great album. Spoiler alert. Um, and number one, of course, is Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan. Um, pretty easy number one for this year. And it's tough to even know what to say about it. <laughs> like I always find that about my number ones. I was sitting there trying to come up with something. Um, it's an album that I've really grown to love more over the last year, even if I always did appreciate it before that. I think it deserves all the acclaim that it gets. Every song is great. It's really tough to pick a favorite because every time I go back to the album, different songs stand out to me and I discover new things I love about it. For example, I listened to it again yesterday and I was struck by the beauty of the guitar work and mandolin on the outro of If You See Her Say Hello, which I, I just don't know if I ever really noticed before as much as I did yesterday. So I love when an album reveals new things with every listen. And it's one of Bob's many masterpieces and very deserving of album of the year. Well, I got that one wrong, but I'm happy to because it's a much better album than Physical Graffiti. Anyway, <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, there was kind of a mention of this being like a, a sort of a year marking change. And you sort of mentioned that that's the last great album from the band for you. I don't think they're the only ones. I think there's a lot of artists that are kind of reaching their sell-by date um, by 1975, which is interesting. Um, so there'll be some artists that have shown up before, but it might be the last time they ever show up. I also have four albums in my top 10 that have not been mentioned yet, so that should be interesting. 
My number 10 is not one of those. It is Elton John with Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy, an album that has grown on me every time I've heard it. Um, obviously, Someone Saved My Life Tonight is really good, but for me, I stay for tracks like Bitter Fingers and We All Fall In Love sometimes, like some of the best deep cuts of his entire career. My number nine. Curtis Mayfield, there's no place like America today, of course. And this will be the last time he shows up because, you know, it, his classic era is kind of over. I haven't really listened to what comes after this, but the reviews are not convincing me to. So <laughs> maybe I will. I doubt it. he's going to make the top 10 again, but his voice still sounds as great as ever. In tracks like Billy Jack and So In Love, he's showing that his songwriting is still top notch as well. It's really just such an easy listen and and just vibes, great vibes. Number eight, Northern Lights, Southern Cross by the band. Uh, this is a new listen for me. And yeah, I mean, I do have a couple issues with a couple of the production choices on a couple tracks, but I mean, any album with Ophelia, Acadian Driftwood, and it makes no difference is going to have a big sort of head start on any other album <laughs> so it's great um even if you know not quite as as polished as say stage fright or music from big pink in terms of the track list right so so it's number eight my number seven is neil young with tonight's the night uh had a bit of an epiphany with this one this would have definitely been outside my top 10 before re-listens and i kind of just sat down with it at like 11 o'clock at night and uh I was like, yep, this is the best setting. You know, you kind of don't feel too great. You know, you got like a, a a drink of choice in hand and you're just hearing Neil pour his heart out. You know, after the Gold Rush, probably one of his most uh, open emotional albums, but this is up there as well. Um, songs like Albuquerque, Tired Eyes, um, just there's loads of great tracks on here. And I'm glad to have realized that. Uh, maybe with more listens, it could break into the top five. But for now, it's at number seven. And my number six really sucks to put this so low because I was ready to have a soapbox moment with this. It's The Who by Numbers by The Who, which I think is so underrated and so great. It's just awesome. But another album crept up ahead of it. Um, that's all that, that there is to it, but it sort of sees them going into a more singer songwriter direction. They take the sort of like folky country influences that were on a couple tracks on Quadrophenia, and they kind of make that way more in the forefront. Um, you have some banjo on here. You have a track that is just Pete Townsend ukulele in a brass section, which is amazing. <laughs> and then you also have some really stupid songs like Squeezebox. So it's like a mix of like fun, like comedy-esque songs and then like these really heartbreaking ballads so yeah really unique within the discography great listen happy to own it on vinyl that doesn't make the top five because the final album that has not been mentioned horses by patty smith is my number five of the year such a glorious album. Uh, it's kind of one of those where the first time I heard it, I was like, this is amazing, perfect album. Then I kind of drifted away from it, and now I've come back to it. Um, it just, this re-listen just blew my socks off. It's credited for being this really early punk album, but I really think that's... I mean, yeah, it is, but it's also kind of... It kind of discredits it. It's It's got so much more going on. There's like singer-songwriter vibes. There's a lot of catchiness here. I think her cover of Van Morrison's Gloria is so good and such a great way to open the album um and you get like these nice sort of vibey songs like redondo beach and kimberly and her vocal delivery on tracks like gloria and free money when she's like free money free money free money is so so cool um and then yeah like break it up tom verlaine from television comes in to like do these like really cool squealing guitar parts it's just unlike anything else from 1975 it's pretty much almost perfect um but it's only number five of 975. Won't be too many surprises from here now. My number four is Zuma by Neil Young. Uh, definitely a top five Neil Young album for me. I love the sort of garagey feel of the whole thing. There's plenty of variety too, which is really cool. Yeah, like opening straight with Don't Cry No Tears and that like 
really awesome simple riff contrasted with the sort of lyrics and neil's delicate vocal delivery it's a really cool contrast there and then you get you know songs like part of my heart and looking for a love which will be catnip for the fans of of neil's more folky side really beautiful little songs and then you know the last two songs it's about as good as an album can end in my opinion like cortez the killer it kind of just defies description and then bringing back crosby stills and nash for the spiritual and breezy through my sails was pretty much a stroke of sequencing genius in my opinion it's definitely worth the hype um it's another example of the absurdly good streak he was on in the 70s, which will continue. He is not one of the artists that you will have heard the last of, which may surprise some people, knowing which albums are coming. But I'm ready to do some do some defending. Um and yeah, it's just it's I bought I loved it and I bought the t-shirt. So um bronze medal. Pink Floyd, wish you were here, of course. Uh at one time would have been one of my top ten albums of all time. But I've been through the Floyd spiel before. You know how I feel about them. If you watch the 1973 video, I still think they're great, but they're just not my great. You know what I mean? Um, It's always been my favorite of theirs, though. And this is the one that I will always reach for if I'm in the mood for this sort of like slow, somber, psychedelic vibe that they have. Um, Any album with Sharon, You Crazy Diamond and Wish You Were Here is a classic just, just from that alone. But I'm almost saying word for word what chris was saying didn't really like have a cigar when i was younger love it now what a great song um i have some issues with some of the lyrics on the album particularly have a cigar and welcome to the machine but it's about as perfect instrumentally as an album gets so it doesn't really matter (laughs) like i could say well actually i don't quite like the lyrics on this song but i'm like oh dave gilmore's here doing a four minute solo okay um and i just stopped caring so it's an excellent album. It's worth the hype. You know it. You love it. <laughs> My number two is Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan. Recently got it up to a full 10 out of 10, but only the silver here. Pretty much as perfect as the singer-songwriter genre gets, and I liked a lot of what Vanessa was saying. I think this album really is one of the ultimate grower albums. Like it really you're not going to get it from the first two listens um in my opinion from my experience and i i hate when people say that and now i'm being the person that says that because you're like what i have to hear it loads of times to get it you kind of do you'll probably enjoy it the first time you hear it but these songs are designed to just get under your skin and the melodies on some of them they are immediate like tangled up in blue i think is a pretty immediate melody but some of them just creep up on you and just just you know they just enter your brain and don't leave um it's so consistent there isn't really a weak song um the instrumentation is really 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 good um maybe his best lyrical album i might make that claim and we're talking about bob dylan so that means it's one of the five best lyrical albums of all time so i totally understand having it number one it's just not mine because this was the year of bruce springsteen he i like his first two albums but Born to Run is a whole different kettle of fish. Um, From the first seconds of Thunder Road, you know you're in for something special, and it really is rare, in my opinion, that an album is able to maintain this level of quality throughout. Like, it just doesn't stop. It's just excellent all the way. I could name drop tracks, but virtually all of them are on equal footing for me, and the way they work together in sequence is just mesmerizing. And I've I've thought about this for a while, and it, I think it's my favorite produced album ever. I just I don't think any album sounds better than this. Like I I dare you to find one. Um, it does not exist. Um, and you know, as someone who makes music myself, that's kind of a bit disheartening that it exists because I'm like, man, someone human beings made this. It's crazy. So much blood, sweat, and tears was put into this album, and it was absolutely worth it um it's a definite it's the definition of a bona fide classic um and it is bruce springsteen's born to run which is my album of the year for 1975 which is surprising nobody no (laughs) yeah not really but (laughs) no but been there done that bought the 
framed photo of the album cover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of a dead giveaway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but hey, I had some surprises. I bet you weren't expecting Patti Smith in the top five. No. I've got cool points now with rate your yeah, music you people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't actually care about cool points. I mean, I'll be picking very uncool Neil Young albums in the late seventies. Trust me. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please let us know what your favorite albums of 1975 are. Please let us know how happy you are that we're back. Um, or unhappy if the if that's what the case is. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully we will catch you soon. <laughs>